No, no. <laughs> Whenever we talk about iconic stars from the aughts that tabloids were obsessed with, you hear the same names over and over again. Lindsay, Paris, Brittany. I don't even have to tell you last names because you know who these people are. I'm not old enough to have been a teenager in the 2000s, but I definitely grew up during that time and vividly remember certain names consistently sprawled across magazines like OK, People, The National Enquirer, etc. So why, for the life of me, do I not remember Tara Reid? And why has she drifted out of our collective consciousness? Who is Tara Reid? I have no clue. Who is Tara Reid? I don't know. Who is Tara Reid? No idea. Who is Tara Reid? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Tara Reid? Tara Reid claims to have been the original party girl. The Times did an article on her in 2014, which I have linked down below. From that article, <clears throat> she's talking about her reputation as a party girl in the tabloids, which precedes even the TMZ era. I was the first one, she says. I was before Paris Hilton, before Lindsay Lohan. I am the oldest one. And I started selling their magazines. Why did Reed's peers surpass her in success and longevity? She was partying with the likes of Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton, who have respectively built up empires. Lindsay Lohan has gotten countless opportunities despite her partying consistently interfering with her ability to remain professional, which was never true for Tara Reed. This is somewhat of a miracle, honestly, because as we will get into, this woman's alcoholism was debilitating to her career. While she's no stranger to rehab, she's never gotten a DUI, and somehow she still gets covered by TMZ in 2006 as the third most likely celeb to do so. She's worked nonstop, really, and she's worked on over 65 major projects between film and television. She told The Times, regardless if they're A movies, B movies, C movies, D movies, I always stay working. I love what I do. So despite being the guinea pig for the sellability of the party girl trope, Tara feels like her reputation was both unearned and entirely unhelpful, in contrast to her fellow tabloid favorites. That's not to say that publications like TMZ do any of these stars any favors, but they did move the needle on relevance in the 2000s. And while many were able to piggyback off of this momentum, it only ever seemed to hold Tara Reid down. One thing I want to mention that Troy McKeady of the Dunzo podcast so keenly observed is that Tara really struggles with accountability. This isn't exclusive to her, of course. Most of these tabloid regulars do, and that is what keeps them in cycles of addiction and bad reputations. But her lack of accountability sometimes seems pathological in that it makes her come across as a little delusional. She seems to have a victimized mindset to the point where she gets fact-checked over things and they turn out to be blatantly untrue. But this seems like it could also be a coping mechanism maybe of some sort because she seems to believe her version of events with a full conviction a lot of the time. Something that comes across immediately about her is that she was very obviously funny, gorgeous, and it seems like pretty genuine. Um, She's obviously extremely imaginative and prides herself in being a risk taker, and I think that is part of what made her such a promising young actress. Another thing is that Tara Reid is perhaps unsurprisingly problematic and that she was very much a product of the time. For example, trigger warning. Despite her constant mindset of victimhood, I was watching an interview that she did at the premiere of Body Shot, which is a film about date rape in which she was essentially victim blaming and really buying into and parroting rape culture during the interview. By the same token, some of these interviews and articles are really difficult to watch and read because she was not treated with an ounce of respect. Um, I'm hoping, I don't want to pressure guests, I want them to feel comfortable. I asked for a bare midriff, I don't know what we're going to get. Was I pressuring you or did you already come in that outfit? This is my outfit. That's, see how that works out? I even decorated my stomach. Which I think is true of most women and girls who were reported on in the 2000s, specifically by the tabloids. But interviewers made a lot of inappropriate and uncomfortable jokes, and I think it's unfair to ask anyone to be able to navigate those. But for the most part, she laughs them off, which I think is what would be expected in that time period. 
Um, in spite of the misogyny, which was really common and passable in the aughts, and despite often being talked down to, stereotyped, and made fun of, she comes across really well and really likable in a lot of these early interviews especially. So, seeing as you and I have unfortunately forgotten about her, let's have a quick recap and hit the highlights of Tara Reid in the 2000s. Tara Reid went to the Professional Children's School in Manhattan. Uh, alums of this place include Misha Barton, ScarJo, Vera Wang, Sarah Jessica Parker, Macaulay Culkin. In fact, all the McCulkins. Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, who... Incidentally, I also want to make a video about basically if you wanted your kid to be a star in the late 90s, you sent your kid to this school. She moved to Hollywood in 1997 and her mom always said that she was a major ham and I think this could potentially be foreshadowing for her later career, which is kind of built on camp. Um, and she got her big break in 1998 playing Bunny Lebowski in The Big Lebowski. Uh, this is obviously now a cult classic. It is the brainchild of the Coen brothers. Um, she makes claims that she beat out the likes of Charlize Theron and Liv Tyler for her role in this. It is also reported that those claims are aren't necessarily true so it was hard to fact check that one I'm not sure uh, if I'm honest but this film did lead to other films for her such as Cruel Intentions and Urban Legend and this kind of solidified her in the horror world as an up-and-coming horror actress. This brings us to 1999, which is the release of American Pie. This film revived the comedy genre and marked the beginning of raunchy humor being kind of the pinnacle of comedy in the 2000s. Uh, this film definitely defined a generation and it is truly iconic. And I think it is also important to note that because this film was kind of the first of its kind of this time, that this was kind of a risk. I think this kind of exemplifies that Tara is a risk taker and goes for those riskier films sometimes and is kind of on the forefront um, of the film culture in a lot of ways. This film solidified Tara as an A-lister and she perfectly fit into that innocent, blonde, white, untouchable virgin with sex appeal stereotype that was so prevalent and kind of coveted at the time. I had not seen American Pie before doing research for this uh video i know i'm sure that made some people mad but i did i rented it on amazon so here is my brief review of american pie specifically of tara reed in american pie um i contemplated not watching back really any of her filmography for this video because i didn't necessarily want to be bias then when doing my research um some people say that she didn't have all that much talent wasn't all that promising and it was more always about fitting into that stereotype um others including Tara herself think that she did have you know a quite a promising career potentially ahead of her um and that she did kind of have what it takes quote unquote um here are the notes that I have about American Pie I think she's cute in this I um I think that her and Natasha Leone are super watchable and they have really good on-screen energy together it makes sense to me that uh, according to Tara they're still friends to this day I'm actually really kind of surprised and shocked as to like how funny I found this film. She was great in it. She was funny. Um, but just generally speaking, I didn't think this was going to be my humor. Uh, 
Is it filled with some toxic masculinity? Yeah. Is it problematic at points? Yes. Also, is this the origin of the word? Do I need to bleep that? Anyways, American Pie. Let's talk about Carson Daly. Okay, so Tara Reid dates Carson Daly from March of 2000 to July of 2001. So they met on the set of MTV's Total Request Live TRL, which is Carson's show, and started dating shortly afterwards, and they were engaged by August of 2000. Uh, Tara implies that he might have cheated and alleges a lack of trust between them in statements made in August 2001. She sounds frustrated that Carson was supposedly not understanding of her job, specifically having to be away on set or having to be intimate on screen with co-stars such as Ashton Kutcher. She said later that she regretted the breakup and this is kind of a turning point in her career. Um, She was super loved at the time and on the brink of being like a true household name. Um, And at this point she was reported on as a starlet and not so much as like an alcoholic. Um, And she was super marketable and uh, her type was right for this time. Josie and the Pussycats. So this is August of 2001 and this is her first true flop and kind of the beginning of the end for her. I actually remember watching this one as a kid um, and of course I rewatched it for this. So let me show you my notes. I watched this one last night and I had a blast. (laughs) She nails this part. She plays Melody, which is kind of the more airheaded of the trio. She is a little bit hippy dippy. She's super lovable. She's super optimistic. She is super like head in the clouds, but also like just very loving and it it works so well for her. I suspect that this might be the basis for her ditzy image in the press in what is to come, but she nails this. She nails this part. She's funny as per usual, but yeah, I was impressed with her ability to kind of access um a different side of her that I didn't I hadn't seen in American Pie. Um, specifically that scene where she cries, like, it's heartbreaking. From this command center, we control the most influential demographic of the entire population. We decide everything, from what clothes are in style to what slang is in vogue. Feather tank tops matching pants, kind of a buffy meets chicken run. Feathers are the new rhinestones. The new word for cool be jerkin. As in, dude, that's jerkin. Ooh, that's dirty. This one was really fun. I had some involuntary dance parties she has said that this film is kind of ahead of its time and I agree in a lot of ways so for those of you who don't know uh Josie and the Pussycats is loosely based on the Archie comics of the same name these are the same comics that are later used to uh insert the franchise into like Riverdale if you know that (laughs) This is a box office bomb, although there is now a small cult following. Uh, I think people are fans of the anti-consumerism satire that the story attempted. Um, And despite it completely underperforming its projections, uh, Tara loved being in this film and describes it as a magical time in her life to this day. Um... And I can see why. Okay, so now we have to talk about the Lizzie Grubman thing. Coming soon on video and DVD. In August of 2001, Reed gets caught up in the Lizzie Grubman SUV assault case. Lizzie Grubman is another name that meant nothing to me before this video, um, but it should have. Uh, She's apparently a very famous publicist and has represented the likes of Britney Spears, Jay-Z, the Backstreet Boys... On the night in question, Lizzie got into a car and backed up into a crowd of people standing outside the club. She left the scene of the crime supposedly to avoid taking a drug and alcohol test. 
Luckily, no one died, but 16 people were injured. There were rumors that she shouted inflammatory statements at the crowd before getting in her car. Um, Tara Reid was at a party with Grubman earlier that night in the Southamptons. They arrived together, but apparently they didn't interact much at all. Uh, Tara claims that she didn't see Lizzie taking any drugs or drinking, and Tara Reed was called in to testify, which she was begrudgingly hesitant to do and pretty vocal about the fact that she didn't want to do it. Um, she felt like she wasn't really involved in the situation, and she felt like she was being questioned because of her celebrity status and she thought maybe that raised the profile of the case um she canceled an appearance in LA that was meant to promote American Pie 2 in order to appear in court by this point she had uh changed lawyers and met with investigators and um she changed her mind basically but earlier she did an interview with Howard Stern in which she sounded pretty insensitive uninformed and even annoyed uh, she even went as far as to defend Grubman to a certain extent. You were there. They went at the Shining Seven. So 150. Honestly, like, honestly, like, like uh, the whole thing is ridiculous. First of all, they're just trying to like throw like a, a celebrity's name involved in it. I wasn't in the car. I wasn't with her like at at the club. I was never at the club. You were with her at the party before. The police weren't talking to me. And I, uh, have you talked to the police yet? No, but I'm not going to because I have nothing to do with the whole thing. I'm you refuse to talk to the police. Because, I, you know, I, I have nothing to do with it. Is Lizzie okay, Grubman your friend? Stop talking to Grand Jury. Is Lizzie your friend? Yeah. Lizzie's a great girl, Howard. And that day, she found out her mother had cancer. Okay. Understood. Okay. Understood. She was not drunk. She was not, like, on any, like, she was fine. Like, she, she was just, not drinking that night? No, she was not. I swear. I know Lizzie, and she was not drinking that night. Right. Guys, yeah. I would really appreciate if you guys, like, honestly, stop making fun of Lizzie and, like, <laughs> what else are they going to do? What else? What, no, what, I, mean, I can't talk about Carson Daly. I can't talk about Lizzie. Day. You have a lot to gain from being oh, friends yeah. with Lizzie Grubman because you're a friend of hers, and if you come on this show and you praise her, you're going to be invited to great parties. Oh, and, oh no, I'm like not invited to parties anyway. You, that's but important to you. Say, and please, your party girl, she's very rich. She can take you on very great vacations. With I can her. take myself on very great vacations. I know, but it is fun to hang around with the rich and powerful. But so are we all. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Lizzie Grubman was clearly in the wrong, but the ties between this case and Tara Reid are really thin. While they are friends, it seems like the two really didn't cross paths very much that night. According to the New York Post, uh, Tara was eating pasta in the kitchen and Lizzie was talking to some guy on the beach for most of the night. Um, in the interview with Howard Stern, Tara says that Lizzie is someone who has always supported her and that she does not think that Lizzie fled intentionally, but rather that she had a panic attack and that uh, her friends pulled her out of the situation. And uh, apparently that morning, Lizzie had found out that her mother had cancer which may have been the cause of her erratic behavior rather than some sort of substance um this was all corroborated uh and you can tell in this interview with howard stern that he is trying to wind her up um while she has no business defending lizzie it is interesting to note that she is not very adept at handling the tactics that interviewers use to get an emotional response out of her he reduces her to a party girl. He insinuates that her proximity to Grubman has more worth than her value financially and socially. Um, someone like Britney Spears is super masterful at playing the media, and it seems like Tara Reid just isn't. She is pretty good at deflecting with humor in a lot of these situations, but in this interview and in quite a few others, she makes a genuine direct plea that the media stop picking on not only her, but on celebrities in general, which just doesn't seem effective at all, like in the moment or in the long run. So in an interview done in 2002, Tara talks about already feeling old and like the tabloids are misrepresenting her. I, the tabloids, I, they... Yeah, the tabloids have been a little unfair these days. Yeah. Guys. I mean, they're getting a little out of control. How do, you... do not believe everything you read. They make me sound like a lunatic. How do you handle it? I'm not saying it? that a little wild, but, right. you, know, you know, I try to fit in. I mean, but... I was, you know, you guys, the girls there, because it's, you know, it's pretty right, they're all like 18. Yeah. It was the first time in my life I felt like really old, you know? Yeah. I mean, these girls, you know, their bodies are perfect at this time. Wait and they're so young and I'm like, God, I'm really getting old. Like, the I don't thing is, you're, you're in your 20s. Yeah. 21, something like that. No, a little 
older, but we'll be nice. But um, these are both sentiments that she echoes several times over the next few years of her career. But I wonder if this is why she was never on my radar as a kid, because she was already 27 in 2002. Um, comparatively, Paris Hilton was 21. Up until this point, she had capitalized on being the hot blonde next door, like innocent, but with sex appeal. And now she was trying to age out of that. Um, she did manage to shake the innocent side of her image, but unfortunately, her constant coverage by TMZ and others like the defamer cornered her into strictly being seen as a party girl. She, like so many girls, wanted to leave behind that innocent and virginal trope but most of her peers pushed back against that at age 21 and here she is at age 27. Um, she has said that she feels like she isn't quite in the Paris and Lindsay generation and she said that she feels that that generation she feels more like that generation's godmother. In 2003 Tara Reid gets nominated for her first Razzie for My Boss's Daughter, which she starred in with Ashton Kutcher. It's considered a rite of passage by most, but reportedly she took this really hard. In March of 2004, her and Shannon Doherty got into quite a public fight. Um, so this was at a party at Mansion, which is a club in Miami. Tara and Shannon Doherty were spotted squabbling. Um, for those of you who don't know, Shannon Doherty played Heather Duke in the original Heathers and was also on Beverly Hills 90210 and Charmed. Tara was reported as being very drunk to the point where she apparently fell over a couch, allegedly. Tara tried to get Nicole Richie's bodyguard to throw Shannon out. And Shannon made some backhanded comments about how Tara needs to get help and go to rehab. Tara eventually passes out and needs to be carried out of the club, according to page six. New York Magazine reports on both of them as B-list at this point. So you can tell that Tara's social standing has definitely taken a hit at this point. Now we get to the wardrobe malfunction of November 2004. Um, this might be the incident that haunts Tara the most. I just want you to imagine your most embarrassing moment being this public and this quintessential to a decade. Tara is at Diddy's 35th birthday party in New York City. She is on the red carpet and a strap of her dress falls down unbeknownst to her. Paparazzi alleges that she was drunk, which she denies, and they were snapping for about 10 seconds of her exposed before her publicist goes up and pulls up the left side of her dress. Uh, she quickly leaves the carpet. Um, and quite frankly, she never lives those 10 seconds down. Um, nip slips are something that the paparazzi are super fond of covering, but no one could let this moment go. It feels like from here on out, this is the moment that she gets asked about the most. Um, while I think it's ridiculous that this moment garnered so much attention, I have taken it upon myself to kind of speculate why. It does seem to be one of the first big wardrobe malfunctions, which is what they always call them, um, that was reported on in this way. Lindsay had a similar incident later in 2006 and Christina Ricci in 2007. If I listed all of the items like this, we would be here all day. Uh, but I think a lot of the coverage was due to the fact that it became clear due to scarring that she had a breast augmentation from the videos and pictures that I've seen. That does not seem clear at all, but regardless, she was heavily scrutinized for it. Um, a lot of the pictures and videos are blurred. Um, while I'm sure keeping in mind the culture, this was not the first time that people had commented on her body. This really began the era where everybody made it their business to be critical of her body. I'm going to be talking in a little bit about her plastic surgery as well as her general struggles with her relationship with her body. But first, we have to talk about Teradice. 
Teradice was originally going to be just another seasonal installment of an already running show known as Wild On. Wild On was a show that ran on E! in which a celebrity host traveled around the world and experienced different cultures. Upon reviewing the footage that they had shot of Tara, the network reevaluated and decided to drop the travelogue presentation of the show and pivot to a reality television style. It was then that the name was changed to Teradice. Uh, in a recent podcast, Tara states that revamping the show was actually her concept uh, and that she had pitched it. While I couldn't find anything to confirm this, this was something that she was saying as early as when the show was released. And E! Network's president, Ted Harbert, was quoted saying, Tara was involved in every minute and it was an exhausting production. He also said it was difficult to produce the show with someone so well known. Um, so this sounds to me like she had a good bit of control over the show and this is the first sign that she has some interest in producing which comes up later in her career. Um, I tried so hard to find the show but to no avail. Um, however there is a blog called Grid Skipper which details episodes to an excruciating degree which you can explore through the Wayback Machine. From what I could piece together the show is basically a lot of Tara partying in different places around the world. It aired Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Easter so prime time on E! The first episode features Paris Hilton which is one that I really wanted to see because their relationship fascinates me to no end and well get into that in a bit. Um, I don't think that the way it aired and or was received was what Tara had in mind for the show. On the show's website, she did an interview in which they asked her if it was meant to be about the craziness and the drunkenness, and she said no. Uh, she said, quote, it's all about the countries that we visit. We're like the detectives in a country, finding out everything we can. So if people go to these countries, they can know to find these great hidden treasures. And if they don't go, they feel like they've gone there with us. Uh, Tara said that this was intense partying, even for her, and she said that she doesn't think that she could keep up with it today. She spoke to UK's Metro on being misrepresented by the press, saying, yes, that's one of the reasons I'm doing the show. The press just use these bad, ugly pictures of me, and they write what they want to write. It's so not fair. If you saw the way I have fun, you'd realize it's perfectly innocent. People shouldn't be punished for being happy. I hope the program will help to show that. Sometimes photographers set things up and I've seen magazines that have used a picture of me in the middle of a blink and run a caption saying that I'm wasted. Mark Lasanti of The Defamer wrote, So I'm not entirely sure why the show was canceled because it performed adequately well in terms of ratings. Consistently, it sat at around 400,000 viewers, which is average for E's audience for primetime during the summer. I think now is a good time to talk a little bit about Tara Reid's plastic surgery. So we're going to be jumping around the timeline a little bit, but I think there are some things that have to be mentioned. Um, these days, I think there's a lot less stigma around both plastic surgery and non-invasive procedures, but I want to emphasize that at the time, it was considered news if a celebrity confessed to having gotten class plastic surgery. It's nobody's business, but because of the social implications, celebrities often tried to hide when they had work done, uh, like even more so than today. There is an extra layer of ridiculousness when you take into consideration how truly prevalent plastic surgery was. And I think Tara was super aware of this in a way that was a little bit before her time. Tara's statement at the time, which was pretty much her response to most things she was covered about, was, I mean, everyone does it. I don't know why I'm the only one who gets so much attention. I will say this is another one of those things that Reed has had a problematic response about. In one interview I found, she said that she felt the harassment and body shaming she received was comparable to that of a disabled individual, which is obviously not okay. I don't want to dwell too much on the specific procedures that Reed had done because she is clearly very uncomfortable with people talking about it. But for the purposes of the timeline, she went under the knife in 2004 and 2006. 
I'm more so wanting to focus on how it was all covered by the media. The rhetoric is truly disgusting. Not only did the tabloids hound her until she admitted to having had work done, they also proceeded to be extremely critical about the results, using language like botched, unflattering, and deformity. Honestly, the verbiage is so out of line. Uh, Beyond specific language used, the lines of inquiry themselves is truly despicable. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about her body image later, but some of the lines of questioning included, did you see the unflattering photos that were printed of you last week? And what don't you like about your body? Uh, One blog even went as far as to create a chronological collage so that the public could compare before and afters throughout the years. Like harassment. This is harassment. Despite having uncomfortable stomach pains because of the procedures, Reed has said that she is scared of ever getting surgery again, even to fix anything because of the backlash she received from her initial experience. We need to do better. Like, I'm off script now, but it actually appalls me. It appalls me how much hate she received for this and how okay it was for people to be critical about something that was that is this personal like this was not journalism we would be remiss to call this journalism let's talk about Tara Reed's friendship with Paris Hilton. So Tara Reid and Paris Hilton have a particularly fascinating history because their fallout is far more documented than their initial friendship. When looking for evidence of their relationship, I found a lot of photos of them taken together, but I couldn't quite get a gauge on how close they actually were. There is one blog that goes as far as to stipulate that they began hanging out in the late 90s and that Paris is responsible for dragging Tara into the hard party scene and then dropping her when it seemed like she couldn't keep up with the antics. Uh, This is pretty much entirely hearsay as no sources were cited, but thanks to Getty Images, I can confirm that they were photographed as early as March of 2000 at an Oscar nominations party. Getty Images has a record of the two of them being photographed throughout the years at an Armani Jeans party, Men's Health Fashion Week party, John Fall Fashion Show of 2002, Paris Hilton's birthday party, the 2003 MTV Movie Awards, Avalon Hollywood Grand Opening, MTV's Maid Party, and more. The last time they were pictured together during this era of friendship was in 2005. Cinema.com reported that Tara was pretty belligerent at Paris Hilton's 21st birthday party on March 1st of 2002 at the GQ Lounge in Hollywood. She reportedly dug her hands into Paris's birthday cake and tried to start a food fight. On October 7th, 2005, Reed was quoted saying, I hang out with Paris and we're friends. She's a great girl. She's fun. But we don't arrange to go out. I normally just see her out and someone says, let me take a photo of you two. I don't have her number. She doesn't have mine. Have a look in my phone if you don't believe me. From this quote, I gather that she is trying to distance herself from Paris. Perhaps because she was trying so desperately to distance herself from the party girl persona. But not two months earlier had the pilot episode of Paradise come out, which Tara had invited Paris on to party with her in Greece and where she had this to say about her, quote, there are just certain people you know you'll always have fun with and Paris is definitely one of those people, unquote. Tara was correct in assuming that Paris had not saved her number because this is one of the bits of information that we can glean from the hacking of Paris Hilton's phone in March of 2005. On August 15th of 2005, Tara and Paris are spotted sitting together at a party in Saint-Tropez in the VIP room. This is not to be confused with the incident where Tara fell over slash was maybe potentially pushed uh, into parked motorcycles. It's a different Saint-Tropez incident. We're not even going to get into that one. But maybe that statement about them not being close was less about wanting to distance herself from Paris's image and maybe it had more to do with the infamous incident outside the Hyde Club in late 
August of 2005. If you knew Tara Reed's name before this video, it is likely because of this incident. Uh, this is one of those immediately recognizable 2000s moments that just feels almost cinematic in how it unfolds. Tara Reed is standing outside of Hyde, which is a trendy LA club. She's ready to enter when the bouncer doesn't let her in. I read somewhere that the bouncer said that they were at capacity. I can't find that now, so I don't know how true that is. It's really hard to hear in the video because Footloose is playing in the background. Either way, the bouncer isn't letting her in. Then the camera pans and through the bright flashes of paparazzi cameras, you see two girls approaching. One is Paris Hilton and the other is a yet to be known Kim Kardashian. I should mention that while Paris Hilton is basically famous for being famous, Kim K was known for nothing at the time. And these two just effortlessly breeze into the club. And then the camera pans back to Tara and you can just immediately like see her deflate. It is admittedly difficult to tell what happens in the video, but some people swear that both Kim and Paris individually clock Tara for at least a brief second before completely ignoring her on their way in. And 10 years after the incident, Paris both denies that she saw Reed, but also expresses regret over not having behaved differently. It is of note that when these stories came out, Reed was listed as a D-list celebrity at this point. In January of 2006, Tara Reed gives $20 to a dog. In November of 2006, she does an interview where she basically says that she is still trying to leave her party girl image and specifically Tara Dice behind. It's around this time that she's speaking more and more about wanting to start a family. She's been talking about leaving the partying image behind for a while at this point, but this is when it seems like she wants to actually leave the lifestyle behind for a quieter life. Trigger warning for this next section as I am going to be talking about disordered eating. As previously mentioned, Tara's body was always under the microscope of the media and she was always subject to extreme scrutiny in this regard. In late December 2007, it was reported that she had suddenly lost a significant amount of weight. I'm not going to include numbers here, but it is safe to say that she was on an extremely restrictive diet coupled with 90-minute daily cardio sessions. She had lost a lot of weight in just under two months and was pretty severely underweight. In November of the next year, she had gained a little bit of the weight back, but still wasn't talking about food or her body in a super healthy way. She talks about how she feels like yo-yo dieting is the only way that she can maintain the figure that she feels the pressure to have and also be able to eat what she wants. She also said that others' comments on her body really get to her and about how living in the culture affects her. I have a quote, people in Europe are not judgmental about their bodies at all. They go topless and they don't care. Americans are tougher. If this isn't abundantly clear, Tara Reid had a severe and public drinking problem. Everyone made light of it and constantly turned it into a joke. There was even a computer game that was based on this reputation. The press took advantage of her addiction and constantly turned it into a punchline. But finally, Tara got to the point where she sought help for her alcoholism. She went to Promises in Malibu, which is one of the most, for lack of a better term, popular rehab centers for celebrities. Uh, Lindsay has been in and out. Others include Brittany, RDJ, Matthew Perry, Charlie Sheen. She reportedly checked herself into the facility, um, and there were rumors that her stay was paid for as a promotional thing. These were completely untrue, but they circulated regardless. Her program was 60 days long, and when she came out, she did an interview with In Touch where she said the following, quote, The hardest thing was walking through the door for the first time, finally admitting that I had a problem. I had been in such denial, end quote. This is one of the only examples in which she is totally taking responsibility and I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that she kind of admits that she lives in her own world sometimes. She came across really well after exiting rehab, but she seems to have fallen on and off the wagon a few times since then. Some other stuff happened to her after this, like an infamous on-air feud with Jenny McCarthy and her career being surprisingly resurrected by the Sharknado franchise. But those are essentially Tara's greatest hits of the 2000s. 
So here's the thing. You can read this woman in several different ways. Is she just a spoiled, entitled, delusional husband who got lucky at the beginning of her career? Or was she a talented, promising, underrated, and screwed over actress who was never given her fair shot? Is anyone deserving a fame? I don't necessarily think so, but it is interesting to note that someone like Paris Hilton, who was relatively talentless when she rose to fame, was able to do so and solidify herself in that tier. Comparatively, Lindsay Lohan is extremely talented, but arguably considerably more problematic and was forgiven a million more times for a million worse things. And she was also able to leave more of a lasting impression. So what went wrong in Tara Reid's trajectory and why was she unable to stay in the upper echelons of celebrity pop culture queens? I have a few theories. I mentioned this earlier, but I think a big reason that I don't remember her from my childhood and neither do a lot of people in my age group is because we were coming of age during her downfall. She peaked at a time that I was too young to remember. Something that was mentioned on the Shut Up Evan podcast was that she seemed to be far more in control of her sexuality than most girls of the time. She seemed to be more comfortable with it, which might be a result of the fact that she looked a lot younger than she was. So she was sexually liberated with the wisdom of a 27-year-old woman, but people looked at her and saw the face of someone that they thought might be a 19-year-old girl. I think that this was ultimately used against her because it confused the narrative. So many young women of the time had their sexuality weaponized against them. And to have someone embrace it in the way that Tara Reid did was not something that the culture could understand. And therefore, they found it threatening. She owned her sexuality, which meant that the media did not. And they didn't like that. I think it is important to consider who was in control of her narrative and whether or not they had her best interest at heart. Because of her optimistic, imaginative, and authentic nature, she can come across as clueless. And I think the media really leaned into that narrative. And because they doubled down on that, it is really difficult to tell how self-aware she is. Additionally, she was continuously cast as characters who were ditzy, which she was really good at playing, and in a way, she was kind of punished for nailing her type. I mentioned it earlier, but Reed was never good at playing the media. Her general tactics consisted of complaining to the media that they were making her look like a lunatic, which they then capitalized off of. Nothing makes you look crazy like saying, I'm not crazy. I think it's also important to remember that she had a publicist and her team was actually called out several times for maybe not doing such a great job in terms of spinning or controlling her narrative. So where is Tara now? Near the beginning of my research, I remember reading that she once said something along the lines of actors can't cast themselves. But now she is actually a producer. And from recent interviews, it seems like she is really empowered by the fact that she can create not only her own roles, but roles for other actors as well. Her projects seem very in line with her personality in that they are avant-garde and imaginative. And there are also rumors that she is going to be playing Carol Baskin in the Tiger King film, which I am super excited about. Another interesting thing to note is that Tara does not have and never really had a massive fandom or standum to support her like a lot of other reformed party girls. The point of this video, it's not to convert you one way or another, but just to provide a frame of reference so that when you hear the name Tara Reed, you finally have some background info. I want to end by contextualizing a quote from earlier. To the time she said, this girl has lasting power. She's been in the business since she was six years old. Regardless if they're A movies, B movies, C movies, D movies, I always stay working 
I love what I do. And to that end, she does. She stays working and she clearly loves what she does. I found her and know way too much about her. And now, so do you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Big shout out to Mila Tequila, Troy McKeady of the Dunzo podcast, The Wayback Machine, Pop Culture Died in 2009, and the Shut Up at Evan podcast. Big fuck you to the tabloids that exploited Miss Reed. It really killed me every time I had to turn off ad blocker to give you guys yet another dollar. I think my next video is going to be about Jamie Lynn Spears getting pregnant in 2007. Who knows if and when that will come out, but I'll see you guys then. Catch you on the flip.